The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared, then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed, warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The word epiphany comes from a Greek word, epiphania. It means light, insight, unveiling, revelation, but also appearing, manifestation, glorious display. As when something deeply hidden comes to light and bursts upon the scene. Liturgically, Epiphany is associated with the opening of the light of revelation for the Gentiles, the non-Jews, where the covenant with Israel is extended to all of humanity. In the Christian East, it is also known as the Feast of the Theophany, the making visible of the invisible God. Who were these wise men from the East? Some scholars think they were Zoroastrian priests from Persia. Others, that they were kings as in the hymn, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Scripture doesn't even tell us how many there were, although the three gifts implies three gift givers. Whoever and how many they were, shrouded in mystery as they are, we do know a few things about them. First of all, they were not Jewish. The revelation of God in the flesh is a revelation for the nations, a light 
for the Gentiles, for all of us. Secondly, we know that they traveled a long way, even if we don't know from where. And camels are not even actually mentioned in the gospel stories. The narrative of tradition makes up for that. And tradition also gives us the specific names for the wise men, Balthazar, Melchior, and Casper. As an aside, in my own strange imagination, I like to picture these three wise men from the East as the great sages of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism. Of course, I recognize that this was and never has been the case, and that it has more to do with, it, with my continued respect for the great wisdom traditions of the East. But all other lights, all other wisdoms bow before the wisdom of the littleness of God in Christ. Whoever these wise men were, they came seeking wisdom, attracted by his rising star. Today, would we even notice the light of this star? or any other star for that matter. So blinded by the ambient light of our electricity, neon lights and devices, addicted to screen culture and its digital feed, do we even look up and know what we are missing? A light for all who dwell in darkness. If we were kings, or wise, would we even be humble enough to recognize the wisdom of this littleness of God among us? A threat to the powers that be, King Herod, or whoever, then or now, all earthly sovereignty on its knees, whether kings or simply wise men from the East, or perhaps just the sovereignty of the self on its knees. Blinded by the lights of our own making, we fail to see his rising star, the subtle yet bright change in light. Some scientists think that the, the light was a comet that spoke of his coming among us. And has the unconcealing, overwhelming plenitude, the splendor of the vast array of a star-filled night, not also spoken to us of his presence? Also, for different reasons, both King Herod and the wise men discern the danger of this manger. For Herod, he saw it as someone competing for his throne, and for the wise men, the danger of Herod himself, for them. And for both, the danger of this manger that turns the stranger into a brother or sister. The light of revelation to the Gentiles the otherness of the other turned into the gift of this child, overturning sovereignties everywhere. A littleness recognized only by the wise and those little enough to embrace the foolishness of God in Christ. Together let us proclaim the truth. 